When I found out that this week's topic was going to be about music, I was so excited because music is one of my absolute favorite things to talk about. Since I'm in uni, I've gotten the really great opportunity to be able to DJ for our student-run radio station, WCBN, and it's been one of the best experiences of my life. I've learned about so much more great music than I ever knew existed. It's been fantastic. I was quite a late bloomer when it came to like being music crazy. A lot of my friends got into music in elementary school, like late elementary school, early middle school. I didn't really start caring about music in a very personal sense until until probably the end of eighth grade. I would listen to the radio, I would listen to the stations that all the kids at school I uh, listened to, but it never was something that I really connected with until I hit puberty and life sucked. <laughs> a lot of the, the first times that I was experiencing dysphoria came as a result of being older. <laughs> and there are a couple of things that happen with women that are a part of puberty that I didn't know how to deal with and that were revolting to me, that horrified me, and that I found absolutely humiliating. And I didn't know how to cope with that. My mom tried her best to help me. She really did try to be there for me, but she just, it, the advice that she was giving me about how to handle having boobs, for example, wasn't helpful. I didn't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to have them. <laughs> and as a result, I ended up gaining quite a bit of weight as well um, to go along with the breasts, and that made me unhappy. And then, um, I didn't have anything, I didn't have any role models either to help guide me. I had my parents, but I think that to a certain degree that's not the same thing as having somebody who's, you know, hip and cool telling you that everything's going to be okay and that you don't need to worry and that life is going to be awesome. You just have to be there to see it. I had a fateful sleepover with a couple of my friends when I was in the eighth grade and they had their cool iPods. I didn't have an iPod because I didn't have enough music to carry enough to put on an iPod. Now over the course of going through their iPods one of my friends mentioned a band called Tokyo Hotel and I was not really paying that much attention. I have no idea why I remembered this but I did and I'm so glad that I did. I was surfing on YouTube oh, back in 2008 and I happened to remember the name of that band because I was trying really hard to get into music because it was something that all of my friends were interested in and I felt left out. Well, I happened to remember the name of that band and so I typed it in and the first thing that it said that blew my mind was, by Tokyo Hotel, do you mean T-O-K-I-O Hotel? And I thought, is that really how you spell Tokyo? Which of course it's not, but <laughs> well, in English it's not, but in German it is. And so I clicked on that, and I was like, yeah, sure. And the first thing that popped up was this music video for a song with a name that I couldn't pronounce, really, and that I wasn't sure what language it was in. But anyway, I was playing RuneScape, so I just kind of had that as background. <laughs> and uh, I just remember being absolutely awestruck by this song. And so I f switched from RuneScape over to YouTube, and I watched the video, and I just remember thinking, God, I have no idea if the singer's a man or a woman, and I don't care. I absolutely adore this. Well, as it turns out, the lead singer of the band Tokyo Hotel is uh, Bill Collitz, and he is a man. But he he's absolutely this beautiful creature. Adam Lambert described him as being a glorious androgynous alien, and I agree, that is exactly what Bill Collitz is. Now, the more that I listened to their music and the more that I continued to be absolutely head over heels for the singer, <laughs> the more I listened to what he had to say as a person and not just as a lyricist. And both of those things were things that I could really connect to. He talked about being, you know, the strange one, the weird one, the odd one out back in school and about how to compensate for that, he would wear more eyeliner. He would 
Spike his hair even taller. And that was really something that reverberated in me. And I was, it was something that I tried to internalize. So I went through this very gothic phase when I was in high school. And for a lot of people, that's the time when they sort of talk about like, oh, that's, that's so mainstream, and oh, I hate the world, and oh, I hate my life, and oh, I hate my parents, even though they buy me the clothes that I'm wearing that, you know, that I say that is my representation of how much I hate my parents and I hate the world. But unlike a lot of those kinds of people, I was so happy for the first time, really, I, 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 would, I would almost say in years, even as a ninth and 10th grader in high school, because I had been bullied so badly in elementary school that I didn't even know what I liked anyway. And that for the first time, I was in control of what people were saying about me and how they saw me. And that was so empowering. And then I sort of, I'm, I'm sort of more out of that phase of, of as far as fashion and attitude is concerned now. But I still consider him to be one of my biggest idols. He was also the first person who... I knew of that was androgynous that way and who was a boy but who was beautiful and because I wasn't familiar with you know David Bowie boy George any of that sort of no nothing like that I didn't know anything about that I just knew about Bill Collitz and I knew that I wanted to be just like him and one of the things that I've sort of run over in my mind a lot of times is that he identifies publicly at least as being straight even though that's completely counterintuitive to the way that he presents himself. And for the longest time, I was a little bit frustrated with him for not just say, you know, coming out and saying, you know, he's gay. But the more I re think about it, the more I realize that, you know, perhaps he's not even gay. Maybe he's just a straight man who doesn't want to conform to the gender binary. And either one of those is completely fine with me. And the idea that that would even be an option had never occurred to me before. So they really were, in essence, my gateway into both music and loving music and also into the world of androgyny into the world where you don't have to follow the gender rules or roles and that a world in which you could and i was happy so that was really the biggest influence on me to date I've had, you know, other things since then that have happened to me or pe people that have influenced me, but if I hadn't remembered the name of that band, I would be in such a bad place still. Of that I'm thoroughly certain. So I definitely feel like when people say that a band or a singer or a song can change your life, that that's true. And that's something that I live by and that's something that I really, really believe in. And if you ever feel like you need a song that could empower you to feel good about yourself, I would definitely look into them. Two of the songs that I would recommend, one for when you're feeling all alone and one for when you want to stand up for yourself. The one for when you're feeling alone would be Zoom Into Me. And if you were feeling like you want to get up and get up, stand up, stand up for your rights type of thing is Hey You. So those would be my two suggestions, and I highly, highly recommend them as a band. M musically, they're very solid. Lyrically, they're excellent. And their image is very good as well. So, and they're good people. And so that's my musical explanation. <laughs> and yeah, and they should be coming out with a new CD soon. They've been in the studio forever, and I can't wait for it to come out. So I'm very excited. All right, well, until next Wednesday, take care, gents. Come on, you can look at me. I don't need a fit in. Stand up if you give a damn. It's the living season. Who and what you're looking for? Have you got a reason? You can if you want to see Cha-Cha Mona Human.